Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this 84th episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. Special guests on this episode include actor Larry Saperstein. The high school musical The Series is available now on Disney+. Plus. We'll also talk with actor and podcaster Asante Black. You might know him from the television show This Is Us, has a new podcast to talk about, Here Comes the Break. We'll also visit with legendary VJ and podcaster Matt Penfield about the new podcast idea, Missed Riffs. And we'll also visit with country singer and songwriter Faith Schuler. We'll hear her latest single, Rainy Day Lover. She'll play acoustic for us. We'll also talk about some of her upcoming releases, tour dates, her inspiration, and so much more. Of course, if you would, please take the time to subscribe, drop a like, comment, leave some feedback, and of course, share with your friends. Now, believe it or not, there actually was a summer outside last year. Even though we were all inside eating cans of soup we've had for four years, taking work calls over Zoom, and of course, watching Judge Judy in the background. Or is that just me? Well, naturally, we're looking to ramp things up this summer to make up for some lost time. And according to a new poll, 75% of people plan on being more active this summer than ever before. Now, some of the activities people are looking most forward to include swimming, walking or running, playing a group sport, and cycling. Now, on average, we plan on spending a full extra week outside this summer compared to last year. And 72% said they want this summer to feel as close as possible to a normal pre-pandemic summer. Of course, I really don't know anyone who doesn't want to go back to pre-pandemic summers, so I'm just curious what the other 28% are thinking. Plays Big Red on High School Musical, the the series. We've got Larry Saperstein with us. And uh, first off, Larry, I appreciate you taking some time to be on the show, brother. Thank you so much. I'm happy to be here. Now, tell us what it was like uh, being a part and uh, getting involved in High School Musical. I mean, this has meant uh, so much to so many over the last uh, few years. And what's it like to be a part of uh, of that growing phenomenon, if you will? Well, you know, it truly is a family. Uh, we we happened to film our show in Salt Lake City, Utah, where all three original High School Musical movies were filmed, uh, and we're at the real East High, uh, where where the movies were. And you know, there are members of our crew that have been working on High School Musical since the very first movie. So uh, it has always felt like we were stepping into this amazing family uh, and kind of carrying on this legacy. Uh, so there's a lot of responsibility, but it's it's really wonderful. And uh, and it's been so amazing to see how people have enjoyed the show and how people have understood what we're trying to do and uh, and to see that journey over the past year or so since the first season has been released uh, has been really incredible. And uh, like you mentioned, season two now available on Disney Plus. And uh, Larry, being the youngster, I mean, how much do you appreciate uh, the the extra streaming opportunities and the, the always availability of the show as well? Well, you know, it was so exciting when we were first releasing the show because we were releasing it with the release of Disney Plus. Mm -hmm. uh, so we got to do all these amazing uh, events and, and opportunities to help promote Disney Plus as well as just our show. And I, I kind of feel like we're part of the Disney Plus history, which uh, is, is such a big, you know, influencer now in the streaming world. Uh, so many people have and love their Disney Plus subscriptions. Uh, so, so to be you know, kind of a staple part of how that was formed uh, is always going to be a really incredible memory, um, which I'm, I'm so proud of. And so I, I feel like the show is is perfect fit for Disney Plus. Uh, it's it's so, you know, modern and current and edgy. And and so I think that it's it's really exciting that that we are a Disney Plus original um, and uh, and that people can sort of watch us whenever they please. <laughs> <laughs> now, the season two now out is uh, how much different was the, uh, the the process of putting season two together as opposed to season one, which obviously was was recorded and everything pre pandemic as well? Yeah, well, you know, I will say that there was absolutely nothing about the story that we wanted to tell or, uh, you know, the message in the show that was changed uh, because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. The only thing that we had to really adjust was the way that we filmed. Um, and and that was just done with, uh, you know, 
making sure that we were as safe as possible, consistent testing, mask wearing uh, when we're not on camera and, and all of those and all of those things to make sure that we were safe. Uh, they, they took wonderful care of us. And and uh, and we all kind of have this responsibility that, you know, we wanted to get this show uh, done and we wanted to see it out in the world. And and so in order to do, to do that, we kind of all had to carry the responsibility uh, to, to keep each other safe um, during filming the rest of season two. And, and I don't think anyone will really be able to tell that it was filmed <laughs> during a pandemic, uh, which I which I really am very proud of. Now, Larry, as things start to open up and, and we approach summer, what's the biggest thing that you're looking forward to doing this summer that you missed out on last year? You know, I would love to go to Disneyland. Uh, <laughs> now that Disneyland is opening back up, I would love to spend a day in Disneyland uh, and enjoy that. Um, I think that would just be really fun. <laughs> <laughs> now, what over the last year, Larry, what have you really focused in on and really perfected on your craft as you've had some time to yourself and uh, and separation as well? Yeah, well, you know, one of my pandemic projects was actually uh, learning how to play the piano. Uh, so I did that uh, when when we started and, and I've actually uh, kind of fallen in love with it. I, I've, I play very, very often and uh, and, uh, you know, it's been such a wonderful creative outlet that I can sort of do from my own home uh, because I am a tap dancer. And for so long, getting into a studio to dance was really something that I, I wasn't able to do. And I was trying to tap dance from home a little bit, but but it was difficult at times. And so uh, uh, to be able to kind of find new creative outlets and and now to be able to to get into the studio again and, and tap dance is, is kind of wonderful. That's good stuff. And again, High School Musical, the series is available on Disney Plus. And Larry, I want to make sure and let folks know where they can find not only more info about the, the, the series, but also everything you've got going social media wise as well, my friend. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Larry Saperstein. <laughs> All right. Well, Larry, it has been great to visit with you this morning. Looking forward to catching up with season two, and hopefully we can catch up again real soon. Of course. Thank you so much. Now, a lot of the sayings that people repeat to each other, they sound smart, right? But how smart are they really? Well, someone put together a list of wise sayings that are actually dumb, and here are a few that I thought we would highlight. Like number one, flattery will get you nowhere. Well, you know, it's actually pretty effective sometimes. Number two, good things come to those who wait. Now, patience is a virtue, but sometimes you have to grab the bull by the horns and go get what you want. Number three, you'll sleep like a baby. Well, except babies are famous for not sleeping well. Number four, money doesn't buy happiness. Maybe not, but it sure does solve a lot of problems, doesn't it? Number five, cheaters never prosper. Now, some people might argue that Wall Street is built on cheating your way to more money. Am I right? Number six, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Not always true. Number seven, Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Now, sometimes emotional damage can be even worse and even last longer. And finally, there are no stupid questions. Now, it is a good saying for kids, but, well, you know, it's less true for adults. You might know him from a, a small TV show that, uh, that's been on called This Is Us. Got a new podcast we're going to talk about called Here Comes the Break. We've got Asante Black on with us. And first off, Asante, thank you so much for your time. Oh, man, I'm just happy to be here. <laughs> now, now, tell us, where did the uh, when did the podcast idea come to you? And man alive, there's a bunch out there, aren't they? Oh. <laughs> wow, I mean, so many podcasts. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know which one it was when it first came to me, but um, no, maybe I, I'll say like a year, year and a half ago now. Um, the pot, the the idea came to me. Um, I, I, when it, when it first came to me, I just thought that it was such a beautiful uh, artistic idea that's never been done before. So I was all in. Um, you know, the marriage of hip hop, music, um, t uh, storytelling, uh, and mental health is something that you know really really grabbed me because it was you know first of all two things that people really enjoy um and are entertained by and then one thing that isn't talked about enough um it needs to be uh so i was like why what what, what better way to you know entertain people and also bring about these important subject matters in this 
And music is is always such an easy transition into discussions of whatever you want to discuss. I mean, if you put the right theme music underneath, you can talk about anything. Am I right? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, who is it that uh, that inspires you in in the story process of the podcast so far? Oh, uh, I mean, honestly, I would say <laughs> I would say Sean and Taylor Bettison, really. Um, you know the way that he was able to pull this together and the, the writing on this show like the writing on this show is so crazy to the point where this is an audio drama you're not even going to be watching anything you're just going to be listening to everything but it's going to have you hooked like you're watching your favorite tv show every single week um because you never know i mean there's always something brand new that's coming right at you now for you asante what it, it, how much of a challenge is it doing voice work audio work as opposed to being able to put yourself out there in front does it does it make it harder for you to pull the emotions in your voice definitely definitely i mean in acting you know you're always the one of the biggest uh, elements of it is your scene partner and who you're acting with you know bouncing that energy off of because that's what we do in real life you know we give and receive energy whenever we're communicating with each other in podcasting, not in uh, and in voiceover, not necessarily not not necessarily the same because uh, you know it's really just me reading or not reading, but acting out my lines uh, by myself. Yeah, I have a reader there with me, but it's not the same as having that exact actor that you're able to uh, just really connect with. Um, so it's 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 a challenge for sure. Um, and voiceover actors do not get the credit that that, that, that they deserve. And Asante, has there have you gone through any readers that you're just like, okay, that was a one time you're reading. I've got to find somebody else next time around. Anybody that was hard for you to play off of? <laughs> yeah, no, definitely. Um, but you know, you just you just make it do what it do and do your best as as an artist. You can't really do much in that moment. But <laughs> like you say, yeah, that was that was the first and last time I'll be reading with you. <laughs> Now, in in pandemic times, what have what has been keeping you motivated, inspired, and uh, and have you find found it harder to keep inspiration in these times as well? A hundred percent, a hundred percent. I mean, when your whole life and world is just stopped, um, you know. Well, I mean, what, you know, what else do you expect? Um, there's this there was a whole lot of blockage, I guess you would say, creatively. Even for me, during the pandemic, I really didn't do much. Um, but you know, kind of just work on this podcast, really. And this was my source of inspiration. This was where I was able to, uh, I guess, kind of force myself to get up and and get after it every day, um, because I knew that I was creating something that would really impact people and that would really change the podcasting world for the better. Um, to you know, be able to make more creative and and amazing uh, projects. Um, but then also something that I enjoyed that I was passionate about. Um, it was a good story. You know, I love a good story at the end of the day, and I love being able to tell one. That's right. Now, uh, Asante, if folks want to find out more about hey, Here Comes the Break and and everything you've got going social media-wise, where's where's the best place for both of those? Yeah, so Here Comes the Break. First two episodes are out now. Uh, episodes releasing every Thursday. You can figure out where to listen at herecomesthebreak.com slash listen, or if you don't feel like doing that, just go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, iHeartRadio, or wherever you listen to your podcast. And you can just follow me on Instagram or Twitter at Asante Black. I'll be happy to join you in a Hope, hope you have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, Asante, I'm looking forward to the new episodes as those come, brother, and hopefully we can catch up again real soon. Hopefully, man. Great talking to you. Now, last summer was a bust for travel, but this summer should be all clear for vaccinated Americans, at least here in the U.S., so where are you going to go? Well, WalletHub.com crunched the numbers to create a list of the best budget-friendly U.S. destinations. They analyzed 100 of the largest metro areas across 42 key indicators, including stuff like the price of flights, the cost of living locally, the number of attractions, weather, safety, and the number of beer gardens per capita. Hmm. Now in the end, Orlando is number one, Honolulu is second, followed by New Orleans. The rest of the top 10 is Austin, Atlanta, Salt Lake City, Tulsa, Oklahoma, Los Angeles, Oklahoma City, and Little Rock, Arkansas. And yeah, you heard right, two Oklahoma cities made the top 10. So eat your heart out, New York City. Now by the way, New York, is at number 47. Now the worst city to visit that they say is Lansing, Michigan. 
Ventura County, California, just north of LA, was second worst, followed by Fort Myers, Florida, Portland, Maine, and Allentown, Pennsylvania. I told him before we came on the air, I mean, he's made a difference in so many guys that have loved music, radio, uh, all that kind of stuff over the years. Got a new musical comedy podcast to talk about titled Missed Riffs, and uh, we've got Matt Penfield on the line with us. And first off, Matt, thank you so much, brother. Cameron, it's good, good to speak to you this morning. Thanks so much for having me on. I really appreciate it. Now, Matt, you know? tell tell us where did the where did the podcast idea come up with, and uh, and having a little comedy with the music. I mean, we all need that right now, don't we, brother? Yeah, that's really what it came down to. You know, I mean, uh, it's been a crazy couple of years for me. I was hit by a car. I know it sounds almost like it's part of the comedy, but it really happened to me at the end of 2018. I was crossing the street in Hollywood, California. I was sober at the time, and now I'm sober about a little over a year. But I want to say that I, I, a woman ran a red light, and uh, I saw her in the corner of my eye. I jumped up, snapped my leg in half. I went through a windshield like a bullet with my head, and then she hit the brakes. I flew about 15 feet, and then, you know, I survived that. And uh, it took me a long time to walk again, about eight months. You know, I, I was doing physical therapy the whole time. And then, you know, come out of that, and then you got the pandemic, which I wanted to just say, uh, you know, I'm grateful. I'm, I survived being hit by a car. Then we got the pandemic, you know, and I, we were just, me and a bunch of my friends who were in comedy um, and, you know, songwriters as well, decided that, you know, originally we were going to do this podcast that was about artists that should have been big, but we're not. And then one of the guys said, hey, why don't we do a podcast about artists that don't exist? Fake bands. Uh, and we'll just do something really cool and have fun with it and do every genre and, and just make it comedy because, you know, these guys write incredible comedy. So it's basically behind the music from VH1 meets Spinal Tap. And it's all different artists. <laughs> you know, and, and there's the thing that's great about it, too, Cameron, they're short. I mean, so they don't, people don't have to, like, it's not like a, one of those three hour podcasts where people are, you know, what you, where are you down? It's only seven minutes long. So basically the first four minutes is me telling you very straight, a story that's completely nonsensical. It's pretty funny. It's, it's comedy. And then you hear a song. And I mean, there are people uh, that are involved in the making of these songs that are mem- everything from members of, the band Super Tramp to guys who write Machine Gun Kelly did. <laughs> it's across the board, people from every genre who are like performing and, uh, and these, these, these pretty funny songs. So it's a great time. And, uh, like I said, we're, we're releasing one every single week. It's exclusive on Spotify and it's called Miss Riffs. And the idea is that these artists blew it. Like there's a really funny story connected to each one. Like, you know, they have one hit uh, or a near hit and then. All of a sudden, something ridiculous happens. They do something foolish or some crazy mishap, and then their career ends. And that's what this is all about. But we play their one hit, and and all of them are completely fake. So behind music meets vinyl tap. There you (laughs) You go. And and, and Matt, I know that you're taking advantage. Spotify now has the opportunity to play music in with the audio and to to be a part of that new cutting edge. I mean, how cool is that for? I mean, you've been on the cutting edge a time or two before, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, it's, I'm glad they can, you know, they can do that because we create these ourselves. You know, we own the rights to them, so it's it's like it's fun. You know, we're doing, you know, it's like the guys that are writing them. You know, it's their publishing, it's their thing. But it is good for those people that want to uh, that want to play stuff. I'm still, you know, I still love radio more than anything in the world. So it's exciting. I kind of look at it as like a mini radio broadcast, even though it's a little podcast, but it's seven minutes. You know. And, you and I know, Cameron, because you've been in radio a, a long time, too. Um, I just, I love the medium. I still do. And, you know, I love music so much. That the fact, I felt like with everything we've been through with this pandemic, it was time for something fun that was comic relief. Because people have been through so much, so much change, struggle. A lot of people have been through a lot of loss. Um, and, you know, we just said, you know, what? why don't we give people something to laugh about for less than 10 minutes? <laughs> you know what I mean? And they can, so they can, it's, they're in and out. We didn't want to, we didn't want to, you know, it's kind of like that old, that old thing, don't bore us, get to the chorus. We wanted to make sure that 
it was quick enough and entertaining and fun. And that's really what the whole concept is about. So that's it's right. exciting to do. That's awesome. Again, Missed Riffs, the uh, the podcast is available now. Of course, uh, Matt, I always want to make sure and let folks know where to find the podcast and uh, and everything you got going social media-wise as well, brother. Yeah, you know, um, I'll tell you where I am. It's, uh, so if you go on Facebook, I'm at Matthew Pinfield because, you know, believe it or not, it's a common name in England. Um, so, <laughs> and, but on, on Twitter, I'm at Matt Pinfield. Um, I'm at Matthew Pinfield on Instagram and Facebook. Um, and, you know, I'm always doing something and, and keeping extremely busy. Um, you know, like I said, I've been sober a year. I'm extremely healthy. I, I've lost a ton of weight from like, a lot since a lot of people saw me. They're like, wow, dude, man, you look like half the size of what you used to be. I worked really hard at it. You know what I mean? I just got super healthy. And uh, because I used that opportunity during the pandemic, it was like make or break. Let's, uh, you know, and I got sober. And I'm in recovery, but I'm kicking butt, and I'm having a great time. I'm rocking, you know, and I'm just, I'm really excited. So, like I said, Matthew Pinfield on Facebook and Instagram, uh, Matt Pinfield on Twitter, and um, and this is Miss Riff, exclusive on Spotify. And it's, like I said, it doesn't take a lot of people's time, but I hope they check it out. I had, we had so much fun making them. And, and Cameron, really appreciate you having me on today. It's, it means a lot. Thank you. Well, that. that's awesome, Matt. And again, thank you for your time, brother. Looking forward to the new episodes coming up. All right. Thank you, Cameron. Well, this woman really has a type. A 21-year-old guy on Reddit needs advice after he refused to be the best man in his identical twin brother's wedding because the bride is his own ex-girlfriend. Now, it's not clear where they live, but he dated the girl for two years in high school, and they only broke up when he left for college. But his twin brother didn't move away. So once he was gone, the brother started dating the same girl and didn't tell him about it for six months. Now, he says he was angry and still is, but he said it was okay as long as the three of them never had to hang out together. Now, he probably thought they'd break up eventually, but it never happened, and now three years later, they're getting hitched. Now, he says he thinks their initial agreement should stand, and she shouldn't have to be in the same room with them, even on their wedding day. But his family is pressuring him to be there and says he should just suck it up. Our final guest on the episode today, country singer, songwriter, got a new single out. We're going to be talking about uh, Faith Schuler on with us today. And Faith, first off, it's a privilege to have the chance to visit with you. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much for having me. I am so excited to be here today. What an honor it is. Now, now, Faith, tell me a little bit. Uh, when when did you know that that music had a special place for you? Was it was it early? And di- did you ever know anything different? Well, I have always loved music. They say that I was humming and singing before I could really even talk. <laughs> so I um, I knew that I had this passion for music growing up, and I grew up singing in my church, and it was around the age of. 13 years old, I decided for myself that I wanted to make this my career. And (laughs) ever since that day, I've been writing and and, um, just playing music. And I started in small coffee shops, and now I'm singing on big stages. So (laughs) it's awesome to see how, you know, things develop in time. And I'm just so blessed to be able to pursue this career. The latest single for you, having it out and uh, trying to get some music out there as as pandemic is opening up. I mean, is this single the the response? Has it been a little different than before? Um, It definitely has been. So um, the most recent one I've released is called Rainy Day Lover. And that response was like insane. I was I wasn't expecting for so many people to be listening and um it's just amazing that the support I've been getting, because with the whole pandemic, all I knew to do was write, because right. that's all we could do as artists. So I just wrote, 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 and um, I eventually went to the recording studio in Nashville, recorded some songs, and then um, now I'm really looking forward to this new song that I have coming out this Friday, Getting Over You. Can't wait to share it with everyone. Um, I'm very excited. And the response I've been getting thus far just on this song has been amazing. Like, I posted a video on TikTok, of course. (laughs) (laughs) And um, it's like kind of gone viral (laughs) and people love it. So I'm, I'm really excited for it. 
How has that changed the game? I mean, it seems like all of the new country artists, they, we, we all end up talking about TikTok. And how has that changed the game for you? Listen, it's been quite the ride. It's definitely like a hit or miss. And I think that I'm starting to learn the algorithm. It's a little confusing. I was the kind of person who was like, oh, I'm not going to download TikTok, but here I am. And <laughs> always record videos from TikTok. But no, really, honestly, it's been a blessing in disguise. I have been able to connect with my fans. I've been gaining fans off of TikTok. And it's just amazing what social media has done throughout um, the past year and 2021. So I, I am very blessed that I can still use social media to connect with fans. And I think a lot of artists are taking advantage of that. So um, it's been, it has been very, very good to connect with them. Now, social media, have you had to really tune things up over the last year to just stay relevant and, and keep the algorithm going, if you will? Oh, yeah. I've been like nonstop. <laughs> just what can I do next? <laughs> That's always my question. Um, the second I finish something, I'm already on to the next. It's like a never ending cycle. So I'm always trying to come up with TikTok video ideas or new songs to sing or a new song to write and share with my fans. But it's I'm just having fun with it. And it's really cool to, you know, go on a live video and be able to connect with people across the world. And I just I think that's the most insane thing. And so I enjoy doing it. And I've had a lot of fun learning more about it and just connecting with people on a more personal level. And hopefully they like what they hear and they get to know me a little bit more throughout the process. That's cool. Now, how has the inspiration for writing been this last year? Is it Has it been harder to find or maybe easier to find, but uh, maybe a little darker or lighter than you normally write? <laughs> well, you know, I'm a very positive person and I try to make the best of any situation, whether, you know, it's a good or bad situation. I always am looking for the bright side of things. And at first I was a little like, what in the world is going on, you know, and I didn't know what to expect. I don't think any of us did. And so I was like, man, well, this is a damper because I just put out a new EP and I was really frustrated because I was like, man, I was so excited to play all these shows. And now everything's shut down. Um, but I met my manager, Jeff, and he's been amazing. And so he's helped me a lot throughout the pandemic and I immediately just got motivated to keep writing. And I honestly think I learned more in the past, um, I guess I should say two years or year and a half than I have ever just about songwriting. And I have been more inspired than I ever have been in my life. And I think it's just because I had a very long time to sit there and just <laughs> think about my feelings and my emotion and um, also listen to other people and, and their stories through social media and just meeting people um, through Zoom and stuff like that. And so I, I get inspiration from everywhere. And this year has allowed me to kind of really sit and think. So that's been really good. <laughs> now, how excited are you for the opportunity or have you had the opportunity already to get out and play a few times? I am so excited. I've had a few opportunities, nothing too huge yet. I am looking forward to being back on a full band stage. Um, but throughout the pandemic, I did do something at the North Charleston Coliseum here in Charleston, and that was really cool. Uh, it was live, so no one was in the audience, but it was a live stream, and it was just really cool to be on that big stage. I kind of wish the crowd was filled up, but, um, you know, you take what you can get. And I, I am looking forward to having those seats filled hopefully one day soon. So definitely that's on my agenda and getting some more shows booked for the future. Now, did you have any bizarre places that you agreed to play during the pandemic just so you could play? Yes. <laughs> One time I was like in the middle of the woods, pretty much somewhere. And like mosquitoes, I'm pretty sure were like trying to fly in my mouth when I was singing. And it was just a terrible, it was a very interesting day. But I was like, I will do anything to perform. And so I was like, you know, it's in my hometown. And I obviously show so much love and support to my home town because they give me love and support and so I was like why not let's just take advantage of it go outside but I just remember it being like super humid and sticky 
because we live in a swamp basically <laughs> <laughs> and um yeah bugs flying everywhere and when you're trying to play it cool while you're singing and bugs are trying to fly in your mouth and up your nose it's not it's not really the best experience <laughs> that's hard to pull off <laughs> Yeah, definitely um, hard to pull off, but you kind of just push through. Now, who are your musical inspirations? Who are the music, the the singers, songwriters, or maybe instrumentalists even that that really inspire you? Well, so the people who've inspired me throughout my life. Oh goodness, I can name so many. I love Martina McBride. She, we, my mom and I always used to sing um, the girls' song. This one's for the girls and. That was just our little jam song. But recently, the people who've been inspiring me the most are the people I've been working with. And I think it's just because I get to know them on a personal level. Um, So, for example, my producer, Greg Beek, he's phenomenal. And he's recorded for some really well-known country artists. And he has really, like, taken me under his wing and has taught me a lot about not only just like the production side of things, but also songwriting and everything that goes into that. And he's introduced me to so many amazing songwriters like Marcus Humman, who's written Cowboy Take Me Away and Bless the Broken Road. And I could go down the whole list, but he is just <laughs> this one of the sweetest people I've ever met. And so getting to know these people on, on a personal level and also being able to work with them is very inspiring. Um, because I hear their stories, you know, and it makes me feel like it's more achievable. You know, I feel like when I know them and I listen to their stories and what they had to go through and how hard they worked, like to me, that is so inspiring because I, I want to be there one day, you know, and I want to be writing hit songs and, um, getting my songs on the radio and all, all kinds of stuff. So it is very, very inspiring to hear those stories. And when you talk about folks like that and them having a belief in you as well, I mean, that's got to help you, especially in this last year when we all have those questions, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it is like so amazing to know that I have these people who genuinely believe in me. Like they don't have to give me a time of their day, but they do. They choose to help me and to support me. And to that, like, that just means the absolute world to me. And I I hope that one day I can do that for someone else too, you know, because it's a great feeling. (laughs) Now, what has been the big thing that you've really focused on, maybe personally or or vocally instrumentally, that you've really focused, taking that extra time on this last year? I would say writing. I um, really wanted to get better at writing. I always knew I could sing and I always loved to sing. And um, I went to a vocal coach and I've been going to her for a few years now. And she's really helped me just sing in a very healthy way to make sure I can keep my voice for the rest of my life. (laughs) Um, But one thing that I really have been wanting to work on is writing music um, because there's so much to learn. Like, ideas are endless when you're writing music. And I wanted to make sure that what I was saying was very detailed and in depth and very raw. And um, so I've just been writing, writing and writing, (laughs) trying to make sure that I'm learning. And um, it is it's a lot of fun. And I really enjoy it. So that's what I've been focusing on the past year and a half, pretty much. Well, you're you're sitting there and you're you're holding that guitar so so nicely. I, I hate to see you just sit sit there and hold it for no reason. I mean, I don't know if you had something in mind you, that you'd be willing to play for us today. Absolutely, I'd love to. All right, so I'm gonna play y'all my new song. It's called "Rainy Day Lover." It came out a little bit over a month ago, mm-hmm. um, and I'm excited to share some new tunes with y'all. But if you like what you hear. Please go check it out. This is Rainy Day Lover. I am your rainy day lover, but I want to step in the sun. Out of the shadows, I want to be the only
steal that kiss while the taxi waits. I want you to tell me that you love me and you never want to be apart. But you don't have the heart. I ain't no rainy day. Lover, don't leave me in the dark. It's like waiting for the rain to rise, waiting on Greg Beak and Marcus Hummond. It was such a fun ride. Now, who come up with those chord progressions? Oh, goodness. So, Marcus, <laughs> let me tell you. I Marcus, he is a man. He is, like, very, very talented. But his guitar skills are like, I'm like, how do you even do that? So, he <laughs> had to teach me how to even begin to play that. But I think I'm kind of up there with him i don't know he definitely can play it better but hopefully he's a little proud of me because he definitely was coming up with some of these country country guitar um licks but i love it i'm so happy with how it turned out now what is it that inspires you each day to uh, to to keep writing uh do you and do you subscribe to the thing of writing every day whether you've got the inspiration or not well you see i don't like to force things because I feel like sometimes when I try to force it, I just get very frustrated. I think it's good to always try, but I try to pick the random spontaneous times that like words just come to me. And I notice that those are always my best songs. So I'm always looking for inspiration. I'm always thinking of ideas. Even if I have a general idea, I'll sit there and I'll type it in my phone wherever I'm at. And sometimes I'll be asleep and I'll be like hearing an idea in my head. It sounds really crazy, but it's true. I'll like hear this song lyric in my head and I have to wake up to type it in my phone. Or I have like these voice memos of me at like (laughs) one in the morning, like whispering into my phone because I don't want to wake up and forget. And sometimes I'm like, what the heck was that? But no, really, I just get these spontaneous little moments and um, I try to write them down or not forget them and turn them into a song. Um, <laughs> but then sometimes, you know, you schedule co-writes and stuff and it's really fun working with other people because then it's like you start playing off of each other's ideas a little bit. And so it's always fun doing that because you always get more creative and um you get more ideas when you hear other people kind of bringing up ideas. So anyway, I am always writing. I'm always trying to think of ideas, but definitely the times that are unexpected are always the best. So how many, how many notes do you have uh, ideas for songs? How many do you have, you have in your phone right now? A lot, like probably <laughs> like 500 or, or more. Like uh, some of them are just like one lyric kind of things. And I'll like be digging. And I'm like, what in the world was that? You know, like, that is so random. I don't even know what I was thinking. But then 
Um, there's some like half written songs, some full written songs, and some of them are just like a topic, but I'm always, I have like tons and tons of notes just of song lyrics. Now, what is, what is your normal starting point? Where do you usually start in the, in the process? Is it, do you hear the, the, the melody in your head or is it with the lyrics or the, the poetry of it? Well, you know, I've kind of learned my strengths and weaknesses and I've learned that like one thing that I'm oddly good at is like coming up with melodies. I don't know why, but it's like my go-to. And so I'm always coming up or hearing these weird melodies. And then I try to like translate it to my producer or something like, Hey, I'm kind of hearing this, but, um, definitely like melodies is what I'm really good at. So usually I'll start with like a melody. And then once you have this melody, it's like, you kind of listen to it over and over and you almost start hearing the lyrics. It's kind of strange. I don't know if anyone can relate to that. Maybe I just, (laughs) but definitely the melody is a good start. That's right. Now, now, Faith, if folks want to find out more info about uh, not only your previous releases, the upcoming release as well, and upcoming tour info, I know you're excited about that, and all of the socials. Where's where's the best place to find everything? Faith Schuler. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. So it's Faith Schuler on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. That's S-C-H-U-E-L-E-R. I post um, a lot of behind the scenes kind of things. I'm always doing live videos and giving my fans and friends updates through my Instagram and my Facebook and pretty much any social media platform as well as TikTok if you have the app. And then um, also check out my website. It's faithschuler.com. I'm working on a merch line. I'm excited to share it with y'all soon. So please check that out when it releases. And I'm just so excited for the future and um Hopefully things will continue to go up and I am just very thankful for like the opportunities that I get and the people I get to meet along the way. So go check out my stuff and thank you guys so much for like just supporting me and coming on this journey with me. Well, Faith, it's been uh, it's been great to have a chance to visit with you today. Uh, a little intro, if you will. huh? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, my goodness. It's been a wonderful time meeting you. And I'm just so thankful for you meeting up with me today. It really means a lot. Well, Faith, I I hope you have a great rest of the week and uh, look forward to catching up again. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Well, thanks again for joining us for this 84th episode in Season 2 of Good Questions with Cameron Toll. If you ever have a comment, question, or anything else you'd like to know, you can hit me up on the contact page at gqwithcam.com. You can also find me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and Facebook, all at GQ with Cam. If you'd like to help out in the funding for this podcast, visit the merch store. We've got hoodies, shirts, stickers, mugs, tumblers, and more at GQwithCam.com forward slash shop. If you have a special guest idea, you can email me GQwithCam at gmail.com. Thanks again to Brandon Allen for coming up with our theme music. We're going to let him play us out and hope you guys have a great rest of your Wednesday.